today's video we're going to piggyback off of the previous pump replacement video and instead of replacing the pump this time we're going to replace the entire board uh, the controller board motherboard however you refer to it um, we noticed that our pump stopped working but it wasn't necessarily the pump itself we tested the pump the pump was functional so we actually purchased a new board to replace the entire unit here's the board i'm going to leave a link underneath in the description but here's the part number um it was fairly affordable compared to what i saw at other sites again i'll leave a link below um so let's get started in this process the first and most important step is um taking notes of all the wire locations um it's great that we're taking a video of it but i also took very detailed pictures of where each wire gets plugged into so that way we can replug them into the correct location on the replacement board so uh, we'll start by removing these wires again i already took note of where they go um, if you haven't you should definitely take note pictures tons of pictures if possible so that way you know exactly which location um, of these wires so let's get started by unplugging each individual of these wires Now that all the connectors are removed, there are five screws that we need to remove. Two up top, two on the bottom, and one towards a uh, third way down. We'll remove those quickly and uh, swap the board. We have to wiggle our way out of these wires. They are intertwined and crossing over towards the top. And here we are. We've got our board out. We'll take our new one. And we'll do a quick comparison to the same board. And then we'll go over this wall. We'll open it on and then start putting the wires. And tap it. Here we are. Comparison. They are identical. Connector wise. Top, bottom. I don't know if you can see it. Bottom. Five plugs on the bottom. Five on the other. Eight on the sides, the additional co connectors here. Yes, so this is the right board, identical to our unit. Again, we can always compare on the back. Um, it does say code PROCON45401-1161, and it's an exact match, which is perfect. We're ready for reverse install, put this one away to the side and try to insert this towards the top. The other one came out from the top, so we'll do the reverse. Perfect. I see the screw locations there. We'll try to put our screws back in. And now it's time to compare the pictures we took previously to how we connect these plugs now. Most of them are straightforward. Some of them are very um, specific. So the best bet is 
look back at your pictures and install them as they were connected. As you see, some of these over here on the side, they all fit in the same location. Um, looking at the picture is your best bet to plug them in properly. And I'm gonna pause here, look back at my picture and start plugging them in correctly. All right, we're back and we are all plugged in. I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna zoom in to all these wires just in case you forgot to take a picture, you can try to copy what I have here. Um, so as you can see, starting from the top, it's black, purple. This is only one, one type of wire here. Red. And these here. Hopefully you can see all the colors. And the bottom. A good zoom in there. Hopefully this will help anyone who didn't take pictures before. After we confirmed all the cables are connected to the right locations, um, best thing to do is turn the unit on and run through a cycle of um, some type of coffee, espresso, just to make sure it's working properly before you seal and close it everything up. So let's do that. And you should definitely fill up your water container from a half, maybe a third up into um, the way. Plug your machine in and power it on. It should be blinking and uh, heating up before it actually goes through a uh, initial cycle. I would also suggest to put a container in front of it so that it captures all that extra water that's pumping in. It's actually great. I made that loud noise uh, to show you that the new pump we inserted here or even the old pump that you may have had, there's no water going through the pump and the pump is dry. This is also a uh, very bad thing. So what we wanna do is uh, insert some water into the pump so that way it doesn't run dry. Uh, running dry could burn your pump up. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get a, a, a small syringe, probably from a kid's uh, medication or any kind of syringe that you may come across and uh, we'll insert some water into the pump so that way it's not running dry. And this is how we are going to inject water into the pump uh, to make sure the pump is lubricated enough to keep on going. Now you see a little bit of water dripping down here. Um, if you have a towel, you can you can put the towel down here just to absorb that little bit of water that is pumping out. You take your, in this case, you happen to see it's a CVS syringe, uh, kids medications. Um, you put it into the end of the pump and you inject that water through um, in my case here, um, I just noticed that the pump is actually off, which is a great thing. I didn't see that before. What we want to do is insert that rubber um, absorber back in and put your pump back in place. Yeah, make sure that's uh, inserted properly here. All right, so after you made sure that the rubber absorber is inserted here uh, with the bottom supported, make sure your piping is into your pump and uh, insert some of that water. As you can see, I'm inserting here. Make sure the pump is primed. Um, now I'll take the uh, pliers. I'll squeeze this pipe here. Make sure the water doesn't um, squirt out and then I'll inject some more water into it. Uh, one hand is very difficult, but I'll get it. More water into the syringe, into here, and squirt it in there, just to prime that 
pump. Make sure it doesn't squirt out like that. Prime that pump a little bit more. Hold that pipe, that rubber hose. Try to insert it into your, uh, where it came from without squirting too much water. There we go. Now with a uh, paper towel or towel, dry up that water puddle that you created on the bottom. Okay, now we're ready to try again. We'll turn it off and turn it back on. And now you see the water just pumping through the pump, which is great. Machine's been on. Um, it primed itself. I'm going to take you towards the front to show you that the lights are all okay, ready to brew its next cup of coffee. What we'll do next is uh, we'll take that cup of uh, water that we had previously. We'll turn on the water pump here uh, to dispense some water through the reservoir and pump and prime that pump a little bit more. So we'll turn that on and we'll just uh, turn on our frother. This should pump some water through the system and prime the whole system ready for next uh, coffee making. Once you start seeing the water coming through steadily, uh, you know that the water has been uh, pumped into all the piping of the machine and it's ready to go. You can turn that off, uh, turn this off, and um, pour out your water and uh, you're ready to make the next cup of coffee. I'm going to get some, uh, well actually we have some some uh, beans here. Uh, we'll make our first uh, cup of coffee now. And now that we're all primed, we'll turn the machine back on and we'll try to brew our first um, espresso cup just to go through the, the cycle and make sure the machine's working properly. We can actually decrease the amount of uh, beans and water the machine is putting out, as this is just a test. And we're ready to brew. We'll do a single cup. And this is great. Machine finished its uh, first cup of espresso after having the board replaced. Uh, now the next steps is uh, just put these panels back into onto the machine, screw them in, put the machine back in its original location, and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.